and welcome back to Divine Lady Design Studio. For those that don't know, my name's Nicole Reed, and today we are here for another sewing tutorial. Today we are making a self-binding ironing pad to take away with us on retreat. So let's get started. <laughs> here to make another take on an ironing pad now after I made my uh, desktop one I had a lot of questions because I mentioned that I made one for a retreat a couple of years ago all right so basically I'm just going to take you through that process although I have made it a little bit different this time and I'm adding an extra product in and the reason being is because you're at someone else's facility and you may end up inadvertently heat damaging their um, their cutting mat or maybe their table or something like that so i have tested this out a couple of times and i've tested it on a cutting mat and it doesn't warp it so the things that you're going to need is you're going to need some backing fabric and unfortunately i do not have any of this backing uh this fabric left this is the last of my fabric so i'm sorry i don't have any of that you're also going to need either a fat quarter because this is fat quarter friendly um, except for the backing, the backing needs to be a little bit bigger because we're doing a self binding. Um, you either use, you know, those fat quarters that we don't like in a pack, you can save them for sort of this sort of thing, or you can use some of the um, ironing board fabric. Um, I believe it's called thermal fabric for ironing boards, and um, if you do a search for that, you'll find it in your local area. I don't have an affiliate link for it, I can't find it anywhere on Amazon or anything like that, so um, I do apologize for that, but I will leave a link where you can get it from here in Australia. Um, I'm just not sure where you can get it anywhere else. All right you're also going to need and you want that to be about a, the size of a fat quarter okay now I'm not going to give measurements for the backing because we are going to be doing some quilting so we're going to have it cinch in a little bit and if you've watched any of my videos where I've done a self binding you know that we need it to be an inch bigger all the way around but we're going to wait to get that measurement until after we've quilted it um, you're also going to need two pieces of um, of uh, cotton wadding if you um, have some of the um, Insel Bright by I think that's by Pelham um, or it's called Thermal Plus I think by Pelham maybe um, I will leave some links down below you can use that now the fabric that I'm talking about it has a cotton batting on it but it's got if you um, move it in your fingers it sounds a little crinkly it's got like a, a foil in it and it's a thermal shield you can use some of that now I don't have any of that in stock at the moment so I am just going to use my 100% cotton batting and you want them to be a little bit bigger than your fat quarter size because as I said we're going to quilt them so cut them to about um, 18 to 20 inches so 18 one way 20 inches the other way okay and then that way you'll be good to go with that so you want two pieces of that and then the what I'm adding into this and now this is just out of my um, scrap bin this is double sided fusible foam and again I have made this about a fat quarter size but we're not going to do anything with this we're not going to quilt through this at all because this is actually fusible I will actually fuse the um, backing fabric onto this and this is at the bottom of our other two layers okay so basically all you need to do right now is grab your pieces of batting your fabric that you're going to use the for the top that you're going to iron on and then set your backing and your foam aside once you've done that you also want to have like your rotary cutter some scissors you want to have some quilting pins as well and I've used these on the channel before and they're just by um, Bohin and I will leave a link down below where you can get them and these are curved safety pins so it makes it a little bit easier to work with it when it's all pinned up instead because it's a little bit bigger than the last piece that we done some quilting on where I just used my stick pins this time we're definitely going to need the the safety pins okay and curved ones are just so much easier to um, work with all right, so what you're going to do is you're going to get your two pieces of batting and you're just going to smooth them out 
and then you're going to take your piece of fabric and you're going to place it on top now as i said we're not putting our backing on this because we're going to do a self binding and i have close-ups of the self binding on anything that i've done it on um, but the best one to go and have a look at is actually my project bag and i will link that up the top here uh, my vinyl front project bag is a self binding so um, go check that video out if you want a, a in-depth look at what's going on with that all right so once you've uh, um, smoothed all that out i'm actually just going to give this a bit of a press first to get some of these creases out because it has been stored for quite some time and that's just going to get rid of those creases and i'm not overly fussed about it because this at the end of the day is just an ironing pad and if it gets scorched or anything like that um, basically you're just going to um, toss it out that's why I say use the the scraps that you've got from the ends of your quilts um, but I will leave all the links down below where you can find your insole bright and I think I think it's called Thermaland Plus from Pelon all right so once you've pressed all that and you've got rid of all your creases what you're going to do is just grab your safety pins and we're just going to um, pin our corners just for the moment now I'm not going to heavily quilt this. I just want these three these um, three pieces to um, stick together when I'm quilting. Well, not stick together, but stay together and not be shifting all over the place. Okay, so as I said, we're just going to do the corners for the moment, and you can do this um, quilting in several different ways. You can just do a cross um, on it, or you can cross hatch it. You can do squares one way and then lines the other way like straight lines it's just we want to keep it as simple as possible and a quick project as well so what I'm actually going to do today is I am if I can get these pins through <laughs> um, I'm just going to I think I might do a cross hatch so I'll start with a diagonal line with my long ruler and then I will just go to two inch increments one way two inch inch increments the other way and then that way I know that it's not going to shift around with me so once you've got all those corners done just uh, pop one in the center I'm not going to overly um, as I said overly pin this and then once you've got all that done we'll grab our friction pen and we'll make some marks you don't really need a lot of supplies for this you just really want to have um you know your general sewing supplies basically is all you really need and these um, quilting pins if you don't have quilting pins that's fine too you can use your stick pins if they if you find that easier but as i said they're a great little tool to have all right, so I'm just going to leave my marks at that at the moment. And um, I don't know where my friction pen is, so we'll just use a chalk. And I'm just going to grab my ruler and I'm going to go from corner to corner. Now, if your ruler's not long enough, that's fine. Just grab another ruler. Um, I'm going to get a little smaller one because I'm sort of running out of room here. And just place that uh, um, on the corner. Make sure that it's straight. And it doesn't have to be perfect because... This is a practical item that may end up being discarded. All right, so there we go, we've made our first line. And then I'm just going to go by two, incre two inch increments to make it super easy. And I just line that two inch mark on my ruler which is upside down so we'll try that again <laughs> and we're just going to line it up and go from edge to edge okay i'll leave a link down below where you can get these choco pens from as well they're great they've got a little spinny wheel in them and they just make it super easy to um, mark things and you just keep going until you get to the end so you can see there's not going to be a lot uh, it's not going to take a lot of time to make this, but it's perfect because we can just fold this up or roll it up and put it in our bag and we don't have to worry about it being heavy or we don't have to worry about um, taking any extra weight in our bags or anything like that. So, or extra room and I'll just spin that around and then I'll do the other way as well.
okay so i'm not too sure whether you can see that or not but there's lines all over that and we're going to quilt it now you can use a gray thread or you can use a white thread if you want the quilting to stand out you can use a different color it's just whatever you want now basically all i'm going to do is i'm going to lengthen my stitch length okay that's going to help everything to go through nicely on my machine and um, you can put an open toe foot on this if you want to. If you've got a walking foot, use your walking foot for your machine. Makes it super easy. I'm just going to leave my quarter inch foot on there and um, go for it. And I'm going to start in the center and I'm going to work my way um, out because that'll make it a lot easier. It won't bunch up as much. But remember to lengthen your stitches. So let's head over to the sewing machine and get quilting. Okay, so we have now quilted that all down get rid of any threads that you need to get rid of and what we're going to do is we're going to trim this up and we'll see what we are at um, at our final size so grab your ruler <coughs> and just line up on the edge and we will make our first cut Get rid of that and then we're going to make our second cut so we can line that up on our cutting board now and we're going to trim that down to um, about 17 and a, 17 inches 17 and a half sorry inches so let's take a little bit off move this down just a touch and i'm just using my cutting mat to make sure that i've got it in the right spot trim that off now that's quite padded as it is but as i said because um you're going to be using someone else's facilities you don't want to um damage their table all right so we're going to trim this down to 19 inches and all i'm doing is lining up my straight edges on my cutting mat so at the beginning and at the bottom and then this is 17 inches Okay, so, so now we know that we've got a piece that is 
Um, it is 17 inches high by 19 inches wide. My cat's come to say hello. She's me yowing. I'm just going to give this a quick press. Okay, so now we know that our foam has to be 17 by 19 inches. So that's super easy. All we're going to do is lay our foam down. And then we'll just pop that on. And this one, I was lucky to have a piece big enough. It was just um, sitting there that had come off the end of the bolt. And I'd used some of it. And this was left over. So this is perfect for it. Okay, so I'm just smoothing that out, making sure that everything is lining up. And then I'm just going to use my rotary cutter and use my um, quilted piece as the template. Okay, and we're just going to cut that exactly the same size. Okay, so that is now together. You'll grab your wonder clips and we'll just hold all those pieces together for a moment while we cut our backing piece. So our backing piece needs to be two inches bigger than our size, so in both directions. So our one side is 19 inches, so we'll need to have it at 21 inches and the other side is at 19 okay now that what that does is gives us an inch all the way around our little mat here and then that makes it nice and easy to put our self binding on all right so i'm going to set this aside and grab my backing fabric your ironing pad and give your fabric a really good press okay so we've got our piece of fabric that is 19 high by 21 uh wide okay so we're going to flip that over and then we're going to grab our quilted piece and we're going to place that onto our backing fabric. Now we do want to measure to make sure that we've got an inch going past either way and just and adjust accordingly. Okay, and I just get my little rulers for this and just double check because I can just slide it up. So if I put my ruler in the centre and I just line it up there, I know that I've got to come this way a little bit. Okay, and then I'll do the same for the bottom. I'm going to go that way a little bit. And then I'll just move the ruler along and just make sure that it is lining up. And it looks to be, uh, it is. Alright, so we're going to start up the first of all by flipping this over holding everything in place and just flipping it over without moving anything okay now this is fusible foam so now what I can do is starting in the center I can fuse my backing to my pad just be mindful of your um, wonder clips under there because they're still on there you don't want to iron over those but I'm just fusing this in the center because then I know that it's not going to move on me okay and then I'll flip that back over and this is not even like it, you can just barely feel the heat coming through that okay and then what we're going to do like we do with all of our other um, binding where we bring it over from the the back we're going to machine sew that down now I as I said you can go and check my uh, project bag video out. It is a lot clearer and um, I go through it step by step. But you can see sort of what I'm doing here. I'm just rolling it over and then I'm bringing that over the top and putting the wonder clip. Okay. And I'm going to do that all the way along.
Okay, so let's head over to the sewing machine and stitch that down. So that is how we make a little ironing pad and you can see that that has actually some thickness to it and you can just use it at retreat and the best part is that you can just lay it flat in your suitcase and then that way you don't have to worry about um, excess weight or anything like that. You don't have to worry about it taking up too much room. Okay, give that a really good press on the back as well. All right, but that is it. That is how you make a, a retreat ironing pad. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I do appreciate you being here, and I do hope that you enjoyed making your tabletop uh, self-binding ironing pad to take away on your next retreat. Makes it super easy, not so bulky, into the bottom of the suitcase and you're good to go. If you like this video today, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you've yet to subscribe, make sure you subscribe to the channel and then that way you're not going to miss out on any of my future crafty uploads. But that's it from me today. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and I will see you all again next time. Bye for now.